Hi there. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about a very famous individual, B.F. Skinner. And basically, I mean, he's, along with people like Freud and Jung, Adler, Maslow, so forth, he's one of those people that kind of heads up a certain school of psychology, and that being what we consider behaviorism. He's not the one that started it. I mean, he built upon the works of Pavlov, Thorndike, um, uh, Watson, and others. If you think about Pavlov, the guy with the dogs who's, you know, ring the bell, they salivate, you know, so the bell becomes a uh, reinforce, it becomes a, a stimulus that creates a response. And then, um, basically, that Skinner felt that all of our behavior is based on stimulus, response, reward, or punishment. And ultimately, that kind of means that just like the Pavlov's dogs or the case of, um, you know, little Albert with Watson where he was able to make a young boy afraid of furry animals by giving an unpleasant, uh, basically, punishment in the background when the kid, little kid reached out to touch a, um, like a teddy bear or something. Skinner believes essentially everything is learning and association. This plus this equals this. And so essentially he feels that choice is an illusion. Uh, so the idea is that we may feel we have choice, but our choice was ultimately based on what others have taught us and how others have shaped us to go along and fit into society. Now, Skinner, of course, uh, falls into this kind of category of a utopian. He dealt with such things as the perfect society. And it sounds a lot like Plato, really, or maybe X-Files, however you want to look at it, in which he felt that there should be like a scientific elite that run things from behind. People that you never see, you, you, you don't know who they are, you don't elect them, but they're the ones who kind of push and prod the society in various directions, maybe from uh, influential foundations and universities and uh, as advisors in political organizations. And so essentially he felt that humans, if kind of left on their own, will maybe make choices that will uh, destroy the earth. You remember, he's he was uh, very active during the early 70s when everyone thought, oh, we're all going to die of overpopulation by the year 2000 and, and you know, the world's going to end and so forth. So he felt that instead of building a better society, which was kind of popular in those days, let's build this perfect little society where everyone can thrive in, he felt it's cheaper and more reasonable to build people that fit into society, that are satisfied with whatever place they're in and whatever is taking place in that society. And he felt that you could do this if you control education, if you control the media, if you control politics, because then you could train up children and give them the proper teaching, proper of course, what he felt was, was proper, and then reward them or punish them uh, based on how well they adopted these particular uh, behaviors and thoughts. And so he felt, for instance, that, you know, if, if population or something was a problem, then maybe you start uh, training people to believe that maybe uh, one or two or maybe no kids would be uh, a norm that they should shoot for. And, and societal reinforcement is very strong. You can see it nowadays. It's that way nowadays. I mean, you know, if a person says they're going to have five kids, people look at them funny like, what? I mean, you're, you're, you're serious. You're joking, right? Come on. That is because over the past two generations, there's been this uh, teaching and there's been this image shown of the perfect family. And that perfect family consists of no more than one or two kids in almost overnight, well, over 90% of all media. And of course, in school, that's reinforced. Uh, the societal goals of what men and women should do is reinforced by the society, by the media, by the uh, various uh, entertainment industries, and so forth. 
whether you could say there is any kind of a background like Skinner would promote, it doesn't matter because if that happens to be the um, the ideas that are being shown as being the ideal, then people will strive for those, just like with, I don't know, social learning theory or something like that. We do what other people are doing because we don't want to stand out. So essentially, the, the society that he would look at would be one in which uh, would be very much based on such things as uh, reward, training, you could say indoctrination, but again, he would never go for the point of saying that you should have some sort of dictatorship that would round people up and do nasty things. It's much more pleasant to do the velvet glove approach where you teach people and then if they go outside of what you want, then society, their peers, will look down upon them. And that becomes a punishment. And essentially, this is his vision of a society in which people fit in very well, they, are, they, they become very good consumers, they, uh, they strive for adopting that which the people who would kind of lead this meritocracy type dream would envision for good citizens of the present and the future.